Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ah, like that is the kind of response I like. I mean, you could say clap your hands, but if you just talk to us, that is even more nicer, right? I decided that we cannot simply not beat uh, the piano recital that was done yesterday. So, with the other hand, we try to uh, go for the most boring session ever. That's not going to happen either, right? So, uh, welcome to this presentation about uh, CICD. With me on stage, introduce yourself, please, gentlemen. Yes, my name is Gunnar Gesson. Uh, I'm uh, born in Iceland, live in Iceland, and work for an Icelandic company uh, as a, well, solution architect and, and some other roles. I've been MVP since 2013 and still quite enjoy it. I'm Kamil Sacek from Czech Republic. I'm working uh, in company Navartica and I'm MVP since 2005. All right, thank you. So I'm Arend Jan Kaufman. I'm working with CloudReady Software. I'm from the Netherlands. And actually, this morning I got a question from one guy who said to me, what are you doing on stage actually <laughs> about this topic? I can tell you, um, those guys, I talked with them about this topic, these are the gods. I mean, they know everything about it. And they try to teach me, and, well, it's up to you to judge if they manage to do that. But anyway, if I understand what they are doing, I'm sure everybody in this room can understand, right? So uh, that's why I'm here, to prove that they really can teach you something. <laughs> and, of course, I'm trying to teach you a little bit myself. So... Um, we're going to talk about CI/CD. What, it is, what is CI/CD? Just as the theory behind it. Uh, also, why you might want to use it. Um, I hope to give you some good reasons for that because those guys convinced me to start using it, and actually, I am using it uh, on an almost daily basis. Um, we're going to show you how to work with repositories, how to create them, how to create a build pipeline how to work with browse policies, so that comes kind of tying stuff together, together with a delivery pipeline and a deployment pipeline. So uh, I hope we can manage that in just 90 seconds. Uh, minutes, I mean, sorry. <laughs> uh, minutes, I, I'm really minutes. not so fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let, let's just see where we can go. So a lot of people think it stands for this. I mean, Continuous irritation, continuous distraction. I showed this slide earlier this week to an MVP, and I'm going to uh, say his name. But he said, oh, wait, there's a session about my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say his name, because you never know if his wife is watching also. So anyway, <laughs> I mean, if you think it is this, it is... Uh, Irritation is distracting. Uh, just stay for the next 90 minutes. And hopefully at the end, you say and understand why it is not really irritating. It should help you. And it should not distract you from the daily process, the daily development process, but really help you and support you to build better software and to be more productive. So what is CICD then, if it is not irritating and not distracting you? So the CI, what that stands for, is continuous integration. And with continuous integration, what we mean is not integrating, uh, say, the new versions of Microsoft into your branch. We are talking about what you, as a developer, do every day, develop. And you are working together with your coworkers. You're working together with, uh, with your colleagues. And you are now working on your local machines, hopefully, if you use VS Code and AL, etc. We are not talking about C site here. Um, you work locally, but your coworkers need your work. Your coworkers need to, to build on it, need to use it whatsoever. So you need to share your work with others. And <coughs> there should be kind of a shared main branch or shared repository, shared project where everything comes together. And that is what we talk about here integration, integration of your work and the work from your uh, coworkers. Um, 
But the thing is, if that happens, you know, we all know that th there could be all kinds of problems coming up. You do something, a coworker does something that could conflict potentially. And you want to manage that. You want to be sure that it works. You want to be sure that uh, uh, you don't break anything. So you want to validate, uh, and it's going to be, and we're going to demonstrate that, those guys are going to demonstrate that, how to do that by creating automatic builds, running automated tests, etc., against that build. So that build is going to test your work together, integrated with uh, your, the, the work from your coworkers. So that is continuous integration. Continuous delivery is the other term. CD actually stands for two things. One of them is continuous delivery. And with continuous delivery, we talk about not only integrating the stuff, but also about producing your software into builds, builds that can be delivered, builds that can be released. I'm not saying it will be re released, but it can be released. So um, that is a process that is on top of that continuous integration. And with that, if an integration works, it successfully integrates, it should potentially be possible to deliver that, to create a deliverable that can be sent to a customer. And when we talk about sending to a customer, we're talking about the other term, deployment, which uh, CD also stands for. And continuous deployment is, in fact, one step further than continuous delivery. With the continuous deployment, it is uh, going to be automatically, meaning that it's not only delivery, not only creating a release and then manually push that release to a customer, it's also about automatic deployment to that customer. So, uh, in fact, the moment that uh, uh, you are ready with a new delivering or building a new feature and you say, now I'm done, you start or you kick off that integration process. If that integration process goes successfully, can be successfully ended, it automatically is going to create uh, a delivery and that delivery is then automatically being deployed to the end customer. That is the idea of those uh, terms. <coughs> to put that into uh, a picture, uh, you see that here we have uh, the source, you're building the source, you're developing that, and the continuous integration stops at building the end, uh, the, the, app, the, the app file, I would say, so the, the, the end result of it. Continuous delivering, uh, delivery is also including test, etc. but then uh, m delivering it to the customer is a manually trigger, saying, uh, I, I'm pushing a button to deliver it to the production. While continuous deployment also takes away that manual step. So, um, continuous integration, what do we need for continuous integration? What you need uh, in uh, f first place is automated tests. And you will see the word test a lot here. Automated test is uh, something that you need to do in continuous integration and of course, you get less bugs, uh, hopefully. Yesterday, I heard someone from Microsoft who's supposed to know how software development works tell you that every software developer creates bugs. Well, actually, he said that we spend half our time in a debugger. That's probably not because of finding bugs. In my view, it's also because we spend time in a debugger. It's just to find out how that stuff works that we just created. Not just to find bugs, or because there is a bug, just say, okay, we have now constructed something. Does it really work in the flow that I expect it to work? Um, what you also need is a process uh, to, to monitor a main repository. We're going to show you that. Uh, I mean, if you have a central repository where your code comes together, then the moment someone pulls the trick and say, I'm ready with my work, I'm going to send my piece of code to that shared main repository, then um, something must happen automatically. That automated test, that must be pulled off automatically. You should not go into any site or, or comment or whatsoever and say, okay, now I need to run my test, my, the test myself. And that's something we are also going to demonstrate, actually. Um, so, the idea here is that developers uh, merge their changes as often as possible. Well, that is, of course, up for discussion. What means as often as possible? Some people say it should be every day. 
But I know for sure that um, you, you don't agree with that. I mean, you can develop on a feature, and that feature may not be ready yet for the end of the day to create a delivery for. So it could happen that it is not as every day. But on the other hand, what I personally do is at the end of the day, every day, I at least check in my changes. Of course you do. I mean, if you go home, maybe your laptop break, uh, for, uh, it, uh, it, it could happen something with you or your laptop whatsoever. The next day you need to be, uh, to be sure you can start where you left off the, the, the day before. So um, what you get from that, um, when you can run test automatically, uh, you will be alerted as soon as you break the build. You don't have to wait too long to know if your work is really going to work. So also testing cost is going to be reduced in that way because tests are running automatically. AJ? Yes. Uh, isn't it better to prevent that and, and uh, know that something is breaking something else before it uh, happened? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, you want to know it before. Yeah. Yeah, actually. I don't want to break the master. F f uh, sure. So that means that the moment that you try to push something in, it should be tested before it is accepted. Yep. Right. And that's going wha wha what I hope you are going to demonstrate. We're going to demonstrate that, actually. <laughs> right. uh, so, yes, before it actually enters the main branch, we're going to test it. And not after it enters the main branch, and then test, hey, is that main branch now okay? It should be done before. So, a kind of a pre-test before you update main branches. Continuous delivery, on top of that, is um, you, what you need to have is, of course, first of all, an integration process. And a test suite that covers enough of your code base. That is an important thing. You probably know that when you want to send an app for AppSource, you need to provide a testing, uh, automated testing code units that cover 90% of your code. There is for a reason. If you do not have uh, enough coverage of your code in the automated test, uh, you do not know for sure that something that comes in is really okay. So uh, that also means that preparing for release is going to be easier because the more you can test automatically, the, the, the easier it is uh, and, uh, to, to create uh, software. Still, the deployment is triggered manually. The process of deployment could be automated as well. I mean, it's just saying, okay, now you go to deployment, and uh, that is the moment you choose instead of uh, doing automatically. So you could release more often. Uh, also, accelerating the feedback loop with your customers, saying, hey, um, I'm going to release every week, but I... I want to be sure that it's okay, so I pull the trigger to release. There might be a reason to not release. Uh, you mean uh, it could be uh, there is a, a, a breaking change or whatsoever. Uh, you want to tell customers upfront. Continuous deployment, what you need for that is to have a testing culture that is at its best. I mean, it must be uh, in your whole company. Everybody needs to use, I would say, test-driven development. It's not just creating software and the end, oh yeah, I also need to create some tests. Mm. Uh, and that is the irritating part. It should be the other way around. It should be built around uh, the, the automated test. That is test-driven development. I'm not, we are not going to, to go into test-driven uh, development here. I'm just saying that it is very important. And that's why we in the demo also have a test, actually. So, um, what also is very important is that your documentation process needs to keep up with the process of delivery, uh, deployments. I mean, um, it should not be in the way that you deploy automatically to the customer environment, and then uh, uh, at the end of the, of the month they say, oh, well, thank you for uh, getting five features, but how do they work? They should be able to find out. So documentation process is something you should think about. And of course, then you get faster development, but for your customer's point of view, it is also a continuously continuous stream of new features coming in. Your, your software builds up or gradually, I would say, instead of getting uh, a yearly release. So how did we all do this in the past? I mean, uh, 
today we have a lot of uh, uh, tools that can uh, help us, but I just want to look a little bit back into the past. Did we do this in the past? Uh, how many of you did uh, do CICD with the old seaside environment? Only a few. <laughs> Only a few. Are you sure? <laughs> in fact, if we deliver software to a customer, we have a CICD process. We all have. Without that, we cannot even deliver. So we all have a delivery process. So if you really understand what CICD is, I mean, are you all developing without ever releasing it to a customer? Are you doing it for a hobby? <laughs> I, I hope that you are just building software to deliver to somebody, right? And if you have coworkers, then you have to integrate it in a certain database. Or maybe you're working on your own and you don't have any coworkers. Uh, that could be. But the most of you probably work in a team, and the most of you, I hope, do have customers. So in one way or the other, you must have an integration process. You must have a delivery process, right? So again, who is not having a CICD? No hands. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> so how did we do that in the past? Remember this one? Who does remember this one? <laughs> uh, of course we do. And you see that here, over here, the merge. Oh and by the way, for the overflow room, this is a pointer that you can see, right? Um, so the merge, I mean, we have used that sometimes to overcome certain problems with importing FOPs with, uh, uh, because the text merge did not work because we had to import something that is outside our license development, uh, development license. Uh, this is part of the process. And I'm sure there are a lot of people here that are using this and have been using this and probably are using this uh, every week. I guess you also recognize this one, merging stuff. And there are other tools as well. I know that because I took, just took this one. Uh, but I'm sure you, you, you will recognize this. Who does not recognize this, uh, this tool? Great. No hands. That's what I thought. Full room of dinosaurs, right? Second? Full room of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, this is a manually process. This is why CICD is irritating and distracting from your daily work, because you, do, you want to have this automatically, right? So we know this, and then after a while, Microsoft came up with some tools, you know? Merging objects, next level. I took this picture from a blog that was created one year and a half ago. I mean, it's, and I, I'm quite sure a lot of you are also using this one. Merging object with PowerShell. If you trust PowerShell, if you know how it works, if you really uh, take that, that, that hurdle to, to, to work with it. So, again, manual steps irritating you. Manual steps distract you from your daily work developing. So, the question here is, while you are here, I hope you are not too busy to learn something new, to see how it can work with today's tools. You should not walk away from that and say, I'm too busy. Because just pause for a moment, change the wheels, and go faster from there. That's the idea. And with that, it's It's up you. to me, I think. Up to you. Yeah. Let's try that one. I will now take on the role as a solution architect. And the plan is to create a new solution. And I'm going to do that from a template that I already did, and uh, prepare it for later development by my developers. And uh, here we go. We are here. So what I'm using for this is the DevOps in Azure. And here we have a, a, a project called NV Tech Days 2018. On my GitHub, I have the template repository, which means that it is available for everyone. And what I need to do is I need to copy the clone path to that repository before I go and create a new repository in my organization.
So let's create an EV Tech Days 2018. And I have a repository. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is to populate that repository from the template. And I can paste in the template, git URL, and import the code. So after this process, I will have exactly the same files in my private repository as I do in the public one. Clear. Yep. Are there other, other ways how to do that? You can create an uh, empty repository, initialize it with one file, and then just start from scratch. Uh, with or or I can clone your template locally uh, at my new remote and push it to another There's remote. A lot yeah, of ways. Lot these of kind ways. of things. You almost lost me there. <laughs> so thi this serves as the starting point for us, right? It's a great starting point. Ah. I have an app and a test app without wi and, and some other files in there. I'm going to clone this repository into VS Code. And in VS Code, I'm going to do Control Shift P, use git clone, and paste in the URL. Maybe you want to enlarge this one. Uh, and I want to put Not this, this one. one in a folder somewhere. Yeah. All right. Now it's cloning the re repository down to my local machine, and it's opened. Zoom it in. Control plus. Control plus. I already zoomed it in. Do think we need to zoom it a little more? There we go. There we are. Now, again, I, when I create things out of the template, I need to make sure that I have my own IDs and my own app names in my solution. I cannot reuse the IDs and the names from the template. And also, when I start to, to uh, create the solution, I want to start a Docker container for my development. And this probably will take a few minutes. What was doing the first command you used? So what I'm using here is the Advania Git VS Code extension. And it has a lot of functions that we can use to help us with these uh, things. And if I look at the fork here, we can see that it actually made some changes to my files. It changed the project name to my repository name. And it changed the, the ID. And it also changed the app JSON files. So now we can see that instead of using the hello world, we have our repository as the default name. Of course, we can edit that one. And we can also add some test app and best app in the world or in app. Yeah. <laughs> Best app. I was thinking of most useless hello world. Well <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we can also look at the, uh, the app JSON for the test app that will have the same things in there. Test the best app. And uh, Co couldn't we do something uh, different than just a hello world demo for a change? I mean, who did invent hello world? I don't know. <laughs> You'll change that later. Why? All right, okay, that's going to be my task. Okay, it's gonna be I just task. got a task assigned. <laughs> so and I also want to show this thing here. In the test app, we have something called a dependency. And the test app has a dependency on the main app. So in here, we have the ID, name, publisher, and the version of the main app. And this is quite important. Now we only have to wait for the computer to get ready, right? Yeah, oh, it's just importing license. That must be just second now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. always takes seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last one. Yeah. The, oh, the one thing I can do a little more cleanup here because the template comes with the actual files, and I need to remove them. I will create my own template files with with e my own actual files with my own app name. So I need to clean that up. 
And uh, I can actually look at the code here. And this is a default hello world example. And the test code is just testing that the hello world example is displayed. So you, I have now to take that task to change that message, right? Yeah. Did you create uh, a work item for that in DevOps for me? Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm not going to take that task. No, well, no, I didn't. You didn't? Yeah, but I, I think it was created from our help desk system automatically. Oh, OK, and it was already th there. there will be Can you show it to me then while we're waiting for the container? Oh, it's sorry. already there. Oh, it's already there. All right, OK. <laughs> I Almost just wanted there. to try to bore the people a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, OK, come on. All right, so if you paid attention, you see that this is the actual name for my container. And if we look at the template, and it will uh, point you somewhere. You are using con container on your computer, yeah? Yeah, there's container You are right not afraid of them. No. Just get Th to know th them. They th are your friends. Th th there are some people which are afraid of your Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I need to make sure that my JSON is pointing to my container, so I, I do that as well. And uh, then since we have more than one app in this folder, I also need to set up what they call a workspace. A what? A workspace. A workspace. Which means that I can, uh, from VS Code, I can work on a multiple uh, apps at the same time. Mm -hmm, I know that, yes. And that's a good thing to do. So what do we have now? We have uh, test app and the main app here in the root. And we have the app JSON pointing to our new app new app, we have the launch station pointing to the Docker container that I did. So which means that I should now be able to download symbols. From that container you just created? From that container. Right. And what do you know? It actually worked. So let's try and build the sucker. Sorry. <laughs> So the package is created. Uh, that's a, that's a we, common word on Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now we are pushing and it. That is an our solution architect, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah, we have to deal with that. I have to make sure that it's working before I send it over to my developers, right? Of course. So now it takes a couple of seconds just to get everything warmed up, and and if we're lucky, <laughs> or if we know what we're doing, mm, it will actually work. If we are lucky. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh we are. Sell it is. <laughs> yeah. So now I know that my app is working and I have the new translation file. I have everything I need. I can now send the app to my developer. But I also want to make sure that my test app is working properly. The one here. I can download symbol from there as well. And, and I, now yeah. I see that's, uh, that's uh, why we have uh, the two apps in one repository that we can switch and work together on both. Uh, if we, uh, we have a test-driven development, then I don't need to switch to another workspace or for another uh, VS Code. And I'm just working in one environment on both, and I can uh, create new feature and test for it, and, and exactly. test for new feature, and exactly. so on, back and it forward. It should be pretty easy, right? So, but you, know sh you saw that when I downloaded symbols for my test app, I actually got the app that I published just a moment ago. That's because it's in the dependencies. So it will download it from the uh, Docker container, and it will also download the test symbols. And that is because we have the test app configured to use the test symbol. Does it mean that uh, I have the test suite uh, objects in the container? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we can find out. Let's try and build the packets. This is now the test app. Sorry, where are we? We need to be on the correct place to have it built. It will build. Control F5 to send it to the to the application. And uh, the test app will open the test tools page automatically. I will be able to get my test. It is in here and then I should be able to execute my test. And we are failing. failing. Yeah. 
you wrote wrong test. I wrote wrong test. Or so or what, or the, what <laughs> the failing is saying me is that the, the, the code unit that I'm using, the if we just look in here, we can see that we are using this assert code unit, which is a part of the test libraries. It doesn't exist in my container. So that <laughs> I thought that test the automated test is about automation, right? Yeah. So everything runs automatic. But this involves a, a lot of manual steps. Well, let me try and get this up fixed first. What I need to do, as you show, I was able to build the app. That's because I have the test symbols. But the symbols are not the same as the objects. So I need to add the objects to my container. And I can do that also with uh, because the uh, libraries, the test libraries, they are included in the Docker container, so I can import ah, the correct right. version from there. So that should be quite easy to do. It means now you are importing the test objects into the container to be able to run the yes. test at all. If yeah. I cannot send a, a okay. test that doesn't work yeah. to, to Git. That's just, it's just not something you do. So let's try and run it again. Run all the tests. Everyone is happy. Yeah. Well, there's one thing more that we need to know. If we, if we go back to my app and we try and build it again, everyone is happy. If we go and try Control F5 to send it to the server, we will get an error. Oh, why? Because now we have the test objects both in the test symbols and also in the application symbols because we just import the, the tests as an application. So we need to tell our test app to ignore the test symbols. And we can do that here in the app JSON. So the app JSON has the platform application and the tests. These are the apps that are being downloaded. So if I remove this one from the JSON, and save, use Control F5 again. It should now ignore the test symbols. And well, the same thing now, now I can't build it. Which means I need to download symbols again. Because now I have the libraries inside the application symbols. It's a little complex, but you need to play with this. <laughs> right? The uh, question is if uh, it will be changed in, in the f uh, future. Uh, maybe that it will work. Another way, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Better. It's this is a little bit too. too I think too it will it will change do. after a whole application will be extension, probably. But now I'm able to build. I'm able to run, and everything is fine. So, what did I do here? I changed my setup to have the new project name and the ID. I changed the project name up here. I uh, changed this launch to use my container. I uh, made new exif files. Uh, this is as it should be. Everything is good to go. And I can do my commits, states, changes. And let's push it to the new repository. And just as a reference to the uh, tools and the template that I was using, this is the short link to it. All right. And I'm done. OK. Yeah. Off to a vacation. <laughs> no, 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 no. <coughs> do you trust us when we do any change? Well, well, we can actually just to verify that we have everything that we have, that we uh, want, if we go into you the didn't repo, switch. I didn't switch. Yep. No. I can I can see that I have updated the files in repo. Everything looks good. So you were just acting like a real manager. You say, okay, I this is the work you need to do. Yep. Here's the stuff you start with. I go off vacation, whatever, and we are going to do the work. You do the work. Someone will do the, All right. the work item and you There's always to be someone. So, Camille, uh, what are you going to do? 
I mean, what is your part? Now, <laughs> now we are getting to the point that we need CI, CD to do something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I saw a lot of manual steps <laughs> in here. Yeah, that's... Why we, we can't automate the, the development part. Of course not, but uh, well, that would be love. Maybe we can, maybe. I don't know, but somebody mu must develop that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so, <laughs> so, but the, the whole testing part, all the creating, the, the, the yeah, testing code will, is will, important. Will, will yeah, we will now uh, make the magic and, and run everything uh, manually. All right. To, yeah, and we you are have getting the magic to that band. part. Yeah. We now have the code on the server somewhere on the repository. What we will do now with that? Because I want to run some tests and make sure that uh, Gunnar have uh, done good job and everything is really working as expected. We need to create something which is named build pipeline. Build pipeline will take the code, do something with it, and will produce the app, the, the result of, of this compilation and everything. So, yeah. so, so why didn't well I just have the app in the repository? Yeah, but he I just did created the app. He, yeah. he, he ran yeah, but it I, I don't trust him that he ran all the tests and, and everything around and that maybe he, he just compiled it on, yeah. on his I computer and it's compiling you there. But no, no, you, uh, you just said yeah. well, you don't trust him enough. Definitely but not. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> right, that's enough reason. So you're going to test what he just did? Yep. All right. Uh, it means I will prepare my own uh, environment to, to compile the app, uh, take the, uh, the, the code and maybe run some code analysis that f uh, will tell me that he forgot something. Could that also yeah. mean that if you are going to, let's say, rerun that test, yeah. that I could even push changes and uh, code modifications without testing myself? Yeah, of course, because if you will not run it manually, you're going to run yeah, it a anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that also means that I, as a developer, could say at the end of the day, I have no time to test, so here are my changes, and <laughs> good luck with testing it. Yeah, you can, but it will fail, and it will not get where oh, it should no, be. No, I don't and create uh, bugs. I don't create bugs. It will not fail. <laughs> anyway, so that's nice, because then I do not have to do all those manual steps he just did. Uh, but if you are... I already uh, forgot. If, if, if you are doing the test-driven development, then you need to run the test to... Do ah, that, okay, yeah, that's ah, the okay, good, good. We else you, you are anyway. just developing without that. That's because there might be stuff from others as well that I did not have in my local development, right? Uh, for example. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yep. Yeah. It means now the pipeline will take the code, uh, prepare environment, do the code analysis, uh, tell me the result of that, will compile the uh, package, uh, will deploy the package to uh, my environment, will run the test, We'll collect the, the result of the test and then take the app and we'll save it somewhere. Yeah. Because we need to work with, with the product of this uh, pipeline uh, later uh, in our process. It means that's the build pipeline. Uh, now, how we can create the pipeline? I don't want to do so many manual things to create something like that. I don't want to do that. It's still, uh, it's, it's really, really hard to do, and I ra rather take uh, the possibility to build the pipeline as a code. Imagine that you create the pipeline as any other code in your application. It could be part of your source code. Yeah. My wishes uh, are I can use the source code management for it to, to version the pipeline. I do not need to leave the VS code to change it if I want to change something in the pipeline. I can use the pre-prepared uh, pre building blocks because I don't want to, f uh, to write the pipeline again and again for each app I, I'm developing. And when I have some bug there, because we have bugs in our, our products, yeah? You have. And, uh, every okay, then uh, <laughs> I have that, uh, you know that uh, every, every app could be, yeah, uh, could yeah. be could be reduced to one line, right. which is wrong. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's because uh, if you <coughs> if you are going to to check in your <coughs> your bug-free code, you have to test it against the buggy code from others, right? Uh, definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. uh, okay. Uh, uh, just to get a picture. Bugs clear. are not mine. Yeah, that's, that's someone right, else right, right, that's right, right. who, right. who introduced them. There we go. Uh, and it means when I uh, fix that, 
I want all the, the pipelines will be updated and, and uh, will be bug free. Yeah. Okay. Or potentially you can screw all the pipelines if you uh, enter another bug there. Um, now we will look at that, how we will do uh, the pipeline as a code. It's time to learn something new and it's YAML. YAML? Uh, YAML, yeah. YAML. YAML. I don't know how you are pronouncing that. For me, it's YAML. <laughs> I mean, YAML, YAML, uh, okay. Yep. Whatever. Don't it's, be afraid. It's not, it's not the same thing, right? Uh, don't know. Okay, good. Show us. <laughs> Show us. Don't be afraid. It will be very, very quick. We will not go deeper uh, into that. That sounds, uh, like a doctor, that sounds like a doctor saying it to a patient. Don't be afraid. <laughs> it won't hurt. <laughs> YAML and ma uh, markup language. That's a definition from Wikipedia. Yeah. It means it is not a markup like XML or JSON or something like that, or HTML. Uh, HTML. And it's human readable data serialization language. Human readable. Because why we care that it's easy to understand for a computer like XML? Why we care that computers have problems with under, uh, un understanding to something? That's, that's, I don't care about that. I care that I can read the data because I'm human and uh, I, I want to read it easily. Yeah? Let's computer to, to do something more, more uh, complex with that to read it, but so I need to read the data. What you are going to say is, you are going to make the computer understand you instead of you understand the computer. Uh, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, okay, then I yeah. get it. That's, uh, I don't know why in history something, uh, someone uh, introduced that uh, problem that uh, we yeah. are trying to, to put the data for computer to, to be easy. That's Makes yeah. sense. It means the indentation is important in this language uh, because we are uh, used to it. Space. Because if you are reading uh, the, book, the book, you are reading the book, then uh, you have indentation in the book and you are uh, able to understand that uh, meaning. Yeah. YAML looks like that. It's uh, the simplest uh, example. We have some receipt with name, with date, with customer, which have two attributes. We have I items, which is list of items. Each item have attributes. And we have some text uh, with a description of special delivery. Uh, it means if you look at that, you can read it. And I hope that you understand what is there. I can imagine that it's more complex for a computer to, to understand this text because there is no beginning or an end of, of each part. Or it is, but it's not, not so, so easy to find it. It's just like JSON, just without all the yeah, functions. Yeah, why to put their curly brackets everywhere? Yeah, that's yeah. why. We don't uh, uh, no, I don't know, need them. Looking at this, now I have the connection between the wife and CICD. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> Your wife? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, now I can see that. High heeled slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Who the heck needs that? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a YAML, and we will use it in, in the example how to create the pipeline uh, as a code. Imagine that you create a build pipeline as a, any other code, that's my wish, and the, uh, the solution for is, it is that I will create file Azure slash pipelines YAML in my repository. Uh, we can use SCM because it will be uh, in a root uh, folder of our repository. Uh, we, don't uh, we don't need to leave the VS code mm. because we will write it in VS code. And we can use pre-prepared building blocks. We can, we can use templates for, for the tasks. So are you telling me I should have had this file in my template? Yes, definitely, yes. Oh, why? I will you're add it you're to telling there. Me that yeah, now? no problem with that. <laughs> Sir? You're telling me that now? Yeah. He, okay. he's, he's just <laughs> if, if you have the, the template, uh, the file already there, what I will present here is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of he's course, when we something. fix something in the template, it will be applied to all the templates using uh, all the pipelines using this template. Yeah. It looks like that. 
I have uh, two uh, two repositories here, one uh, app repository with my code and one repository with the template uh, for each step I will be using in the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that was back button. Uh, the connection is in the YAML file. In the YAML file, I have on beginning uh, some resources defined, and I'm telling which repository is the template repository for me, and which version I want to use. I am using the master branch here. Uh, of course, there could be some specific commit uh, in the repository or, or label. Uh, it will uh, help me to uh, not uh, break anything if somebody put a new version to the templates, it will still use the same commit, same version of the templates if I want. Uh, in this case, if somebody update the templates, it will automatically take the latest version. Uh, and for each step, we are defining which file uh, uh, from the templates we are using for, for this task, with some parameters which are defined inside the template file. Yeah. And in the template file, we are using PowerShell to do something. Or we can uh, use something else, no, not PowerShell. We can use anything which Azure DevOps is, su is supporting. That's the pipeline as a code in Azure DevOps. And now we will go as, uh, to demonstrate that. I will switch first. We are back in the... DevOps. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm not yet in the DevOps. I need first uh, uh, clone your repository you prepared. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I don't have it on my computer uh, yet. It means going back, um, okay, clone that repository somewhere on my disk. And after it will cloned, I will open it. And I will add only two files into the repository. Yeah. Two files because uh, in my pipeline, I'm using uh, my own tools, which need some settings. And I will put uh, the these two files into the repository. That no. was kind that's of not Norton Commander. <laughs> that's, that was not Norton Commander. That's far, yeah. The still working, plus. still. 1960, uh, uh, 96 uh, <laughs> year, uh, still working and supported. Uh, what we ch uh, edit, I edit the YAML file here. That's the resources, some parameters here, and the steps for uh, for the pipeline, and edit one uh, PowerShell scripts which is setting uh, some attributes or some variables which are used by my tools to compile everything. Uh, the basic thing is a, a name of the container which will be used, image name, where is the license file, and folders where are the test app and main app, nothing more. Yeah. Now I will commit these changes. All the changes are committed. I will push them to the server now. And we are ready to create the pipeline on Azure DevOps. Uh, I will uh, wait. Yeah, that's now it is there. If I r uh, refresh uh, the files, we can see that the files are on the server. And I will go to the pipelines, build pipelines, and click just new build pipeline. After uh, it will open, I have choose from which uh, for which repo uh, repository I want to create the pipeline. I will use the Azure pipeline, our repository, and now you see that it automatically detected the YAML file in the repository, and is telling me should I create the pipeline based on this YAML file, and I I just say okay yeah use it. I have no possibility to just uh, say save. I need to run it. Yeah. It means it will be created and automatically uh, uh, triggered. Uh, but because I need uh, to set something additional, because I'm using 
predefined password in my case because I'm using Windows authentication uh, in the pipeline. I need to cancel it, but it's already created. I can go to edit it and I will just extend this pipeline with some variables. You can see that there are no steps in the designer because it's fully based on the YAML file in my repository. How about I the H enter? Yeah, I will return back uh, to, to that uh, type in, what is that? in a while. I will just add my variable group in which I have only one uh, variable with uh, some password which is used on the agent, yeah, nothing more. In the YAML, you can see that there is an agent pool, it means which agent will take the, uh, the pipeline to do the work on it. Uh, I don't care what is here. I have this defined in the YAML file itself. Yeah. That will override. What, what is an agent? Agent is uh, just simple application running somewhere on some server, which is connected to my Azure DevOps and uh, waiting for the job uh, to be prepared to, to be done. And if there is something, it takes that and processes uh, the tasks. So somewhere means in, in Czech Republic, right? Uh, right now, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it means I will save and queue. And the build will be triggered in a while. If I want to change something in the, in the pipeline, I will just go to the YAML file in my repository, change it, commit, push, and the new version of the pipeline will be triggered. Yeah. Now we have around six minutes till the build will finish because it will fire the Docker container, import test uh, objects, uh, compile the application inside the container, install it pub uh, or publish it, install it, run the tests and everything around. Yep. So, so we just got the uh, call from the support desk, right? <laughs> yeah, they are waiting for that uh, change, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it means if we will go back, uh, that, that, one. that one, yep. That was the demo, how to quickly create the, the pipeline. Uh, the templates and uh, some app template I'm using uh, where the, the, the YAML template is uh, saved uh, is on uh, GitHub, you can use it. And I have even the VS Code extension, a vertical, which is able to clone the template repository, update the app Git and everything what Gunnar's tool are doing uh, in few steps, there is a, in one step and you have the template ready to, to he's, he's uh, just, just publish it somewhere and, and run, run uh, the development, including the YAML file. <laughs> if there is a bug, just send me the issue. <laughs> so, I mean, that just is, this is kind of overwhelming, right? I mean, a lot <laughs> happened. Um, there is what Gunnar showed it is possible to uh, have an automated test that tests your, um, your changes. Camille showed how we can not do that only locally, but also with a pipeline, a built pipeline from Azure DevOps. So now I am that developer who is going to do that change that is requested to change that whole world message to something that's more meaningful. And, um, do I then, at that moment, need to understand and uh, work with all the stuff you just did, you just demonstrated? I think no. Ah, <laughs> good. So, how does that work? How can I be sure that what those guys created really is executed the moment that I do a change? And the word here is pull request. What I'm going to do um, is that when I do a change, I'm not going to do that on the master branch. I'm not going to do that on the branch that, um, that uh, Gunnar just created. I'm going to branch out for it, uh, create a different branch that is going to uh, hold my code that I change 
And then, when I'm ready, I'm going to ask to do a pull request. And a pull request, that is something you should think about from the shoes of the target branch. The so target it, branch. It sorry, I created a repository, not a branch. You created a repository with a master, with a main branch in it, ah. right? I saw that. So there is uh, always a branch. There is always you, one you branch you at least, but main master that? branch. You there's just created the repository, and you don't know ah. that you have branch there. <laughs> there is a master branch in there. Yeah. You That's you what you're telling you me. Hadn't uh, uh, you hadn't just put seeds somewhere. It, it wasn't on the PowerPoint. I didn't one know branch. that. <laughs> well, actually, it was in your template, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what I'm not going to do is I'm going to do it in a different branch, and then I ask the master branch to grab my changes. My changes that I'm doing should be linked to a work item, so uh, you can plan something. There is not mandatory to do, but it is uh, recommended, highly recommended, and I think it should be a policy. So the moment that I do that pull request, something happens. There is a uh, request coming in that somebody can review. Somebody can say, hey, what is this guy going to ask? What is this guy going to, uh, to push into that master branch? He could comment on it. A reviewer could look at those changes and say, I want to make some comments. This is crap, or uh, please, uh, uh, this is, it is not working, not according to the rules, or whatsoever. Then, when everything is okay, when they are okay with the changes, they can, what they call, vote for it, approve. Saying, okay, now I approve this pull request. I approve this is going to be in our master branch or you approve it with suggestions. Or maybe it's just not um, uh, okay, and uh, you can say, hey, please fix the comments first. And then you say, I'm waiting for the author to make those changes, to update the pull request, and then I'm gonna check it again. Or you just say, reject it. I'm not going to do it. The thing here is, I need to be forced, I need to be forced to do that. I need to be forced to create a pull request. <laughs> That means that I need to lock down the master branch. I need to make sure that a pull request is required. And what this is the flow, how, it is, uh, how that is working. So I have a master branch. From that, I'm going to create uh, the branch, the future branch for well, what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to create a pull request. They can look at it. I'm going to demonstrate that. But I ask Kuna to look at my changes, and when they say, that is okay, it flows back into the branch, and the master branch, and then the actual merge is going to happen. What I need to have is a branch policy. On the master branch, I need to set a policy that requires a pull request to merge changes into the master branch. That blocks me from doing changes directly to the master branch that enforces me to use a future branch to develop my code in and use that pull request. And the branch that I create can be linked to a work item, so that pull request is automatically linked to a work item. So actually, when work comes in, code comes in, somebody can look, hey, what is actually the work item that you are doing this for? What was your task? What, did it, what was your task that was assigned to you? How do we do that? On the master branch, and I'm going to set it up, but here you'll see the changes, so when I do that demo, I can quickly uh, scroll through it. Um, I'm going to require a certain number of reviewers. Um, all reviewers need to approve code change that you uh, want to, uh, to, to push to that master branch. An important uh, uh, note here is this number, of course. How many reviewers need to um, to have to, the, to approve that code. And the nice thing is that you can vote for your own code changes. You can do that. But you need to be allowed to approve it with this uh, checkbox. Otherwise, you can approve, uh, uh, but your vote will not count towards that uh, minimum number of reviewers. So otherwise, it will just not work. So uh, if I want to vote for my own code changes, I have to set that allow users to approve uh, their own change. AJ? Yes. Do you ever 
reject your own changes? <laughs> Uh, uh, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but do, do you ever reject your own changes? Uh, if I did it oh. yesterday and maybe I look at them now. Today, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then even I don't do it. So um, after that, um, you have also the possibility to uh, allow completion of the pull request. Completion of the pull request means that the code is actually going to be merged into the master branch. So the master branch get a new commit with the merged code. And um, what you can set is, hey, if one of the two uh, already uh, vote for it uh, with approved, then it's okay and we can complete it. Um, so th these are uh, settings that we can do. And when I do a change, I could also say, hey, um, uh, you should look at it again. If I did a change to the, to the code, so I can check in code and do that over and over again, the pull request will be automatically updated with my changes. But if I change something, reviewers uh, should uh, uh, look at it again. So that's the last option. Um, I could uh, enforce to have a linked work item. So uh, that automatically the work item also gets uh, ready and you know, work items that are linked to sprints, etc., etc. So this is not only about um, uh, the code itself, it's also about the, the whole development process. Um, then you have the option to uh, the comments. If someone can set comments to your code, say, hey, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Maybe this is a better way, whatsoever. Uh, I want you to fix this. This is not going to work, whatsoever. Um, you can comment, comment on code. Literally just made some notes. And the notes need to be resolved by you as a developer before the uh, reviewer can say, okay, now I approve it. The other part is uh, how do we merge if it is being approved. I have a pull request from a branch. I may have created multiple commits in that branch. Maybe I was working on a feature for a couple of days and I created a couple of commits at the end of the day with work in progress. Then uh, you probably don't want to have all those intermediate commits in your master branch. And that is the ch uh, choice you can make here. If you say, um, uh, no fast forward merge, then you get a complete uh, history of all the commits from the feature branch in your target branch, in your master branch. And if you say squash merge, he's going to make one commit in your master branch. So you don't see all those individual commits in the master branch. They stay in the feature branch. And the recommendation from DevOps is that you delete the uh, feature branch after that because it's supposed that you are ready you combine all the commits as one big commit going into the master branch. And another part is the build validation. And this is the nice thing. You should not think that after you merge the code into the master branch, that then he is going to do the build. He's doing that before that. So the moment that you have a pull request, you can add a build validation to it. And Everything should be passed successfully. The reviewers that do a code inspection should approve it. The uh, other requirements like a linked work item and uh, probably notes should be uh, resolved. And the build pipeline should be successfully completed, including the tests. And when that is done and everything is green, then the pull request can be finished, can be completed. So somebody has to look at a, a pull request uh, to see if everything is ready. Well, not really. You can say autocomplete. The moment that everything is completed, the re reviewer says the code is fine, and if the test also succeeds and everything is, is, is uh, uh, co complying to the rules, then automatically the pull request completes, and then the code is automatically merged into it. So that could even happen overnight. So I want to demo. I'm, I'm not very happy here, AJ. You're not happy? No. Why not? Because he told me what I missed, and now you're telling me what I missed. <laughs> I should <laughs> have done this as a solution architect, right? Good I, I mean, you're yeah. just a developer, right?
Yeah, right. That's All right, show me how to do it. Maybe you are, you are missing one, one uh, thing. That you are missing the point. Ah. So, um, let me see what we have here. Um, I have a work item. Change the hello world message. What is assigned to me? This is the work that I need to do. Just so apparently that help desk created the work item for me, right? So what I now uh, need to do is I need to create a branch for it. Um, but before I do that, I'm first going to set up the branch policy. So that was something that was not done before, right? I so know, I'm I now know, going to do I your know. work. <laughs> so let's first go into the branches. So you see that master branch? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's That's actually the one I here. did. Yeah. yeah, this is the one you created. And you will see that uh, Camille has updated it 70 minutes ago. So I'm going to click on branch policies and do a number of settings. First of all, I'm going to require a minimum number of reviewers. So let's just set that to one. I require to check for linked work items. I want all comments to be resolved. And I'm going to squash my changes. Then I'm going to add the build policy, the one that Camille just created. Yep. Yep. Save it. Save changes. And there we go. There's one more thing. The moment that we create the pull request, we have to type in comments. Like, okay, this is what I asked. This is my pool request with my changes. What I want to do is to have a template for that. Some text for the comments that I'm going to uh, create. So that is a pretty easy uh, thing I can do here. I'm going to do that right now from DevOps. I don't even need to go in VS Code to create folders and files. I can do it right from here. So look at this. I'm going to create a folder called um, Azure DevOps. And I'm going to create a file name, pull request template. Create that one. And then inside that one, I'm going to put this piece of code. Come on. Can you please copy and Paste for me. You are on the on the wrong machine. Yeah. Of course. Without no clipboard connection. Come on. I should. You know this always happens. Why is it not doing any change? I mean, I should be able to put. Ah, okay. Thank you for your contribution. I'm going to type it in quickly. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Y the text in the notepad, it's uh, some just uh, plain text or it's... It is markdown, as they call it. And you know, it doesn't <laughs> work. I mean, how could that happen? Yeah. You are working on a remote and uh, you, when you are connecting to the remote, nope. you, you didn't enable the clipboard integration. Yeah, uh, so think. I'm just going to do this and, you know, your code builds clean. I'm just going to... Um, to type in one thing, not to bore you with the rest, your code builds clean. And you will see that this uh, one is coming up uh, the moment I create a pull request. So the other lines you just need to um, uh, accept that I say it works, trust me. So, yeah. oh, I just created a yeah. pull request request. I oh. guess that was coming. Yeah, you knew that, <laughs> yeah, right? I knew that was coming. Ah. So let me go back then one more time and say, I discard all my changes, create for one time that uh, remove that policy and <laughs> create this immediately for directly from So a screen. developer shouldn't be able to do this, right? No, it should be, I'm doing your work, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, <laughs> uh, let this delete this one here, delete this, save changes, do it again. So I would get this message if I was changing things on master in VS Code as well? Uh, yep. I guess. 
Yeah, so I would be stopped there, telling me I could not write to master? When you will try to push the changes to the server, it will uh, reject the, ch the changes. Yeah. yeah. And there's a way to solve that, or do you need to throw everything out and, and start yeah, from You need to uh, create the branch and, and push it uh, instead the master branch. You can do that. So if there's you a way to do that. Will commit just create the, the branch because branch is nothing more than than a reference to your commit and push this this uh, branch. Hmm. Copy mm -hmm. line by line. Does that work? I tried the. Oh, let's see if that one works. Line by line. Not oh. even that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried to do that. <laughs> so. We have helpful we audience. Don't. Yeah, we have help. That's that's great. Just oh you know, it's not working. I just, just type I, I it. Whatever. <laughs> just type it. Yeah, yeah. You will see that it works. Um, your code builds clean. Whatever. Commit. Commit. There we go. There we go. And then go back to the branches and say, do that policy again. Hey, you have just triggered the build. I did trigger yep, the build. Of course, Whoa. you committed something to master branch. That's good. So now you're making sure he did the correct. Yep. Excellent. You're going to build that. Oh, all right. <laughs> I will c cancel that because we, we don't need that. Right, right, right. <laughs> I understand. Save changes. So here we are again. Now I'm having a repo with. Everything in here. So I'm going back to my work item. And I want to, well, there's no pull request here or whatsoever. I want to create a new branch. That's what I'm going to do. Create new branch. A little secret in here that I'm going to show you is that if I create a branch with slashes in the name, it's going to show me f uh, subfolders automatically. So I do this, say this is going to be uh, the branch for change uh, hello world message, which is based on this repository and then the master branch. I create that branch and save this here. Let me see if the branch got created now. Yes, so from here, you can now see the master branch and my branch that I created. Now, just for the demo, let me create one new branch and let me create an, a branch for Gunnar, who also probably needs to do some changes. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> this, create branch. Now look at this. I mean, I can now see that I actually have two developers doing some work could even combine this if I have multiple branches. So uh, as a little secret little feature in DevOps. So what I'm going to do is um, delete his branch. I mean, whatever. I'm not going to do it anyway. I guess. <laughs> so my task is to um, change that message. So let me um, go into files and get the clone link, clone it in VS Code, yes. Allow VS Code to open. Come on, give me a pop-up. Sometimes this works, sometimes this does not work. So let me just copy it and say git clone, enter the... <laughs> That's the problem of the clipboard. <laughs> uh, okay. You guys, it's funny. <laughs> control C, I did Control C. Git clone. Ah, there we go. Put it onto documents, AL folders. He will create a new folder for your repository here just that you know it. Cloning the repository that he created and I changed and he changed it. Let me open it. And there we are. Yeah, now I can see that you're in master. The bottom left corner here. 
Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm now a wise master. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, um, Gunnar. Yep. I thought you were creating a code workspace file. Oh. But you did not push I that one? I did not push that one. Ah, okay. I created it with the you magic, you know? Contact with P magic? Yeah, right. So that means that I need to create it myself. Because now, at this moment, I just uh, cloned the project, the whole repository, with two projects in it. The main app and the, s and the test app. But I don't need that other stuff in there. If I cannot run this uh, in this way because uh, he's now thinking that this is one big app. It's now if I now try to, to download uh, uh, the, the symbol files, he's going to create another file here uh, for AL packages. Well, it actually should be here. So let me create a code workspace thing that he did with uh, a kind of a magic thing. Let me do that manually so you see actually how that works. But please don't do that in master branch. No, no, I'm, I'm yeah, okay, I, I will. Cool, cool, okay. Um, yeah, let me first switch the branch then. Let me first do that. So switching the branch is done over here. I click here and say, I'm gonna do that in change, hello world message. So now the whole repository is changed the branch. I'm gonna close this one and I now say file open folder. I start with that main app, select it. This is my main app that I have now open and that I can now run as a single app. And well, apparently symbols are missing, but before I download symbols, I'm first going to add that test app to it. So I say add folder to workspace and I select my test app. And at this moment, I have two apps open in one workspace, and that workspace at this moment is untitled. Let me save that workspace as the NAV Tech Days 2018 code workspace file. And now I do have a code workspace file. Let me close it, VS Code for a moment, look into here. This one is having a code workspace file. And this code workspace, uh, code workspace file is just, ah, uh, it's just because VS Code was installed without the um, uh, changing the, the stuff from uh, uh, the right click on folders, etc. So, anyway, if you open a code workspace file, that one is actually, let me show you that, user, not the user settings, the workspace settings, show me that settings.json, he's saying, hey, combine me those two folders into one workspace. And every folder is an AL project on itself. I could even combine this with other folders, non-AL folders. And I could then go uh, up and say, uh, do some settings in this one, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to deep into this. What I'm going to do is to make my change and make sure that I create a pull request. So, um, yeah, you don't you know have what? my Docker. I don't have your Docker. No. Nope. I know that. So you can't do it. I can do that. Actually, I can. I go to my launch objection and say add a configuration, publish to my own server, and I call this one, um, this is uh, AJK uh, local development. And, you know, this is my local server. Come on. I have a problem with uh, selecting and copy uh, stuff today. So this is my machine. And now I say download symbols. And you know what? This is could, couldn't download them. It, it <laughs> can download them, of course. He's now saying, hey, from where do you want to download it? I have two configurations in the launcher JSON. And I say, please take it from the local machine, my local development. So you can so do this. I can do this, right. absolutely. Let me change that uh, message to another one. Let me ask the audience something. Do you want to get page inspector before spring 29 release? <laughs> 
You oh, even I don't <coughs> need to compile it and run it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, let's just speed up. I'm, I'm, I'm sure this thing will work. I'm sure I can just run this. Let's just not run. I'm gonna, at the end of the day, I'm ready. We have 10 minutes left, so let's just uh, go right away and say, I'm gonna commit my changes. Well, well hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold the on. test will fail. Oh, of course the test will fail. It will completely fail and yeah. everything I will break. I know, I, I thought know. that I who cares I for that the test will fail. I for uh, who cares? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> they ag agree with the message, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me change the test as well because, I mean, there is something in here. And you know what? I'm not going to run the test locally if this really works. I trust on the build pipeline that Camille created that this will work. I don't even have the test stuff on my local machine right now. So I just go in here, state the changes, and say changed hello world message, commit, and push. Ask me later, please. And then go here to see that on the files in my branch, I have now really the change. There we go. So what I now want to do is to create a pull request. And I can do that from s uh, several places. I do it just right here, create a pull request. I could also do it from the work item. I could do it from uh, uh, the branches uh, page, whatever. Uh, I could uh, do it uh, over here, for example. There are several places where you can create a pull request. So, well, here you'll see that template coming in that I could not copy completely. So I say my code builds clean. And this is actually what the reviewer is going to see. My code builds clean. I mark that as complete. I'm going to add Gunnar. He has something to do. Uh, as the reviewer, and I say create pull request. Now, at this moment, Gunnar has um, a pull request of, uh, that he needs to review. You see that over here, one, uh, zero of one review was approved, the work item was linked, the comments are resolved, and the build progress that, I, that he created, and I linked that in the branch policy, uh, is now also in progress. So, I think that we can now switch to Gunnar's machine, so he can review the code. All right. Are we yeah. here? You we are. are here. So, back in DevOps, I s from uh, a repo I can see the pull requests. This is the pull request yeah. that we uh, changed. And it's as simple as a task for me just to click approve. I can, of course, and I should, check the file changes that he did. But I actually I actually agree with him in this case, so as hard as it is, I'm gonna approve it. Yeah. And that's it. That's all. That's and all. we need to only Maybe to wait for, for the pipeline. What to about an autocomplete over there? Ah. Yeah I can do that. So if all those you tasks are you going to wait for the build to be completed? No. So I'm you going. can go off. Uh, it's it's done. Let's let's do this first. It's related to work item. Uh, I have it out complete. I'm we want to complete the work item. It me means it will be marked as completed, yep. if all yeah. is okay, and even we can automatically delete the, cha uh, the, uh, the branch. Actually, that. yes, that's, that's nice. Good. As that's long nice. as as long as we get a page inspector, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's do it. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all. Yep. Now, uh, because the build will take uh, another five minutes to, to finish, we can uh, continue with the presentation. And that was what I was creating in my previous presentation, uh, the build pi pipeline. And now we have something which is connected uh, to this build pipeline. It's the release pipeline. Because that's the part of the CD the, the delivery part. Uh, the release pipeline is something similar like build pipeline, but we have only the app as an input. And we want to do something with the app. 
Mostly we want to try it on, on multiple environments. For example, the current version of Business Central, the master br uh, branch of, of the Business Central, it means what will be released on, uh, on uh, f Spring, or we can, uh, for example, put it to our QA server for our uh, consultants to test it uh, manually. In all the environments, we are running again the automatic tests, which are part of the, uh, the repository. At the end, for example, we can run some integration tests, and of course, we should uh, even test that uh, the upgrade code units are working. It means we should uh, test to install the app into environment when, where we have already the old version to test that every, uh, all the data will be uh, updated or upgraded correctly. And the result is app, which is tested, and it, it is ready to deploy to uh, live system of our customers. Can it be done today automatically? Yes, it could be done automatically from the release pipeline if we want. Okay, but also for Business Central Online? Uh, no. In this case, we need to send the app to the app source uh, team. They will need to check it and they will release that. It means we are delivering the app to the right. team and they will make the deployment but part. The moment that they have an API we can push the app file to, we could have this complete deployment end to end. Right? Yep. Well, that would be nice. I hope Microsoft is listening. <laughs> Of course, you can deliver the app to the file system or the uh, Azure DevOps artifact server or another uh, package server. Um, there is no support for YAML-defined uh, release pipelines yet, uh, but it is planned for Q4 of this year. There is a link uh, to, uh, to the things which are uh, prepared. Uh, this item is still in, in uh, status of not planned. It means I don't know when we will get this part, but it is uh, uh, in the backlog of the team, and I hope that it will be uh, as soon as possible, because in this case, we will be able to define the, uh, the release pipeline uh, as uh, the build pipeline. And I will now show uh, how the release pipeline looks like, because we don't have uh, too much time. I already uh, prepared the pipeline here, even you, you see that uh, it was automatically triggered and we have already uh, some releases here. I will just reload the, the page because uh, it's not actual right now. Internet is very slow right now. Okay, going back to the releases. Yeah, something okay. is going on, on on cloud, maybe some storm, I don't know. <laughs> well, we, are, we, we just created too much builds, as you cannot handle it. <laughs> yeah, still not loading. Uh, the release pipeline is easy, just taking, uh, you are selecting which inputs you want if to use. Okay, if it, it works here. Let me see. The release pipeline looks like that. I have input the artifacts. I can have multiple artifacts. It means I can combine, for example, uh, different apps to one release and so on. Uh, it will uh, take it. Uh, in my case, it will uh, release it to the current version of Business Central. And if, uh, if all uh, is OK, it will take it and uh, release to my QA server. Uh, and my, my consultants could test them. Uh, Manually, I can uh, deploy it to the uh, master environment. It means uh, the, the one which will be released next, uh, next uh, release cycle. And if all is OK, I have one step which will take the app, sign it with the, the company certificate, and release it to our uh, company server. And I will try run only this uh, step manually. You can see that there was uh, another release. It was the release which was uh, created by AJ and his uh, pull request. Sorry, what's that? that? And now I just go to the sign and release, deploy. 
deploy. And after this step is uh, finished, it will take uh, two minutes. We will he have an uh, app on our artifact server. I have uh, prepared some uh, uh, example already uh, during preparation. We will have two apps uh, on the app server, one the main app, the test app, and the, the test app will have dependency on the, on the main app. It means I can download it uh, anytime from this uh, server and install, and I can take any version which was deployed there. Yeah. That's the release and, and, and delivery uh, things. We now have an uh, app ready to be uh, put to our uh, live systems on the cu customer side or send to them to, to AppSource. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have, I'll, I'll like to take 30 seconds for uh, just mention that mm. everything that we've shown in AL, it is possible to do that in old CAL as well. Every sh the CI, the CD, all the pipelines, all the builds, the artifacts will be FOB files, backup files, or backpacks. So everything is possible still. For the dinosaurs exactly. in the room, right? And or maybe maybe on uh, for, for these kind of uh, apps, you need even to change the, the base yeah, app. Yeah, but that's just for the next 12 to 24 months, and yeah. then and it and will be AL. We yeah. will be running hybrid environments for the next X years. You and will. <laughs> yeah, well, I will, yeah. Is that and in that case, Is we that can that combine those two <laughs> pipelines into one. Yeah, I get and it. But we need to, worry, we need to uh, be thinking about those symbols that we uh, showed uh, earlier when know, we are merging these things together. There is too much ice on Iceland. Too much there is ice, in yeah. ice, ice Age. Yeah. So, with that, <laughs> um, we are ready with this presentation. And we are one minute and 20 seconds over time, but we also started one minute and 20 seconds too late, so it's perfect time. Yeah, and so, uh, you throw the shoes, I throw are the box. You, you are thro throwing, he's throwing to t uh, the t-shirts because I am not able to throw anything. Um, <laughs> hello? Oh. Yeah, it works. Um, you showed uh, the release uh, package you had on the artifacts page. It had an install package command. Does it create automatically a PowerShell command for you to download that package and the dependency to the server, or? It means uh, how I, uh, you can download the, the, the app from the uh, package server, or if there is some, some command for that. Uh, I, have this I have this command in my uh, PowerShell module, which is available on the internet. And there is just command which uh, I, will, I can use to tell the URL or name of the package and it will contact the server, download the app and put it to the folder of when I, uh, I And it will include the dependencies? And it will include the dependency okay. automatically. Yeah. He deserves a shirt. Over here. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, hi. Hi. Um, so I have this question. Is, d is setting this up uh, the whole CI CD uh, really that much different in say GitLab or GitHub or whatever? I never used uh, the, the pipeline in other servers. I think the YAML pipeline definition is from GitHub. Oh. Yeah, it means I think it is same or very similar. But uh, we still kind of need to have a separate build server, right? Um, in my case, I'm using on-prem uh, agent, but uh, if you change uh, slightly the, the scripts, you can even use the Azure uh, agents which are there, because and you can use the Azure uh, uh, Docker uh, images and so on. I think uh, Freddy have that uh, in his example, and yeah. you, can, you can use even the hosted uh, agents. Really, really should read his blog uh, yeah. with the steps. Thank you. That will put you through it. I think that Over here, Tino. Yep. Um, last Wednesday, I was at a customer, and um, they mentioned uh, to better organize uh, the projects we do. They mentioned uh, Jira. Jira, uh, yeah. Jira. Yeah. Um, is uh, Azure DevOps uh, a good uh, alternative for uh, Jira, or? Um, well, we are using all these Atlassian products inside Advania, so we are using Jira, Bitbucket, and Bamboo, and we can achieve everything that we need from that package. So it means 
Azure DevOps is mm. same like Jira, Bamboo, and yeah. this and kind of things together. Yeah, big bucket. Bucket. together. Even you can connect Azure, Azure DevOps to uh, Bitbucket server, and, and but not everything could work uh, as it is if it is all on Azure DevOps, mm -hmm. because for example, the automatically triggered build could be a problematic because. Azure DevOps yeah. don't know that, uh, that there is something happened on, uh, on the yeah. Bitbucket, yeah. but maybe the trigger is already there. Uh, don't know th uh, okay. that yet. But fun uh, as uh, to register uh, issues, bugs, uh, uh, we could start using uh, DevOps. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't know who was first. Was it? If, if okay, I will. Yes. Here. Thank you. Hi, thank you for this presentation. It is uh, very nice that uh, in a vision we are going to uh, normal way to development uh, with uh, code uh, version and pop pipelines uh, and maybe we will go to git flow some. <laughs> and um, I want to ask about uh, code, rev uh, code review in uh, which time and uh, how you arrange code review in project? I think a code review, it's on you. It's well, part of the... It's, it's part of that pull request. So uh, yep. the, the code review is done by the reviewer and he could really compare what are the changes, make comments on it, say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? And as long as there are comments, you cannot complete the pull request. Mm -hmm. So the developer can see the comments, can say, can reply, they can have a conversation about it, so everybody can read that. He can say, okay, now it's resolved. Uh, he can make changes to the code. The moment you do a new commit to the same branch, the pull request will automatically be updated with the updated code. Mm -hmm. So the reviewer can see, hey, he really uh, updated the code and now the comment is resolved. And only when the all comments are resolved, you can complete the pull request. And completing means now is the moment that it's going to be merged into the master branch, not any earlier. Mm -hmm. In this architecture, we need to have uh, one responsible person or several who... Uh, it's on you. Uh, for, uh, for example, the reviewer could be any anyone from the team. There is only... On, uh, you can enter the default reviewers, mm -hmm. which could be group. Yep. Yeah. It means yep. it could be any other developer, and you say, okay, two or three must uh, accept, and, uh, and that's enough. that's all. And okay. but it's on you how you will set this rule, and for example, how often your colleagues will check the pull request and the review the code and so on. But mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, random people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. If you put it. T-shirt or we? So uh, let us <laughs> just take the last question. Uh, can I, do you want a T-shirt? Because it's, it's, it's seven big. minutes over time already. <laughs> Rod, I appreciate you. Uh, what kind of server did you uh, use for the artifacts? Uh, the artifacts, it's part of the uh, Defo no. Azure DevOps. And, and I'm using the uh, NuGet uh, ah, format. Okay. But in Azure DevOps, there is a new format right now. It's in, in preview. <laughs> It's something named, I think, uh, universal package. You what? can put any file into that. Okay. It has no, uh, no complex definition or something. It's just pack of files you put there and you can download there. It means I think it will be much better for the app file than the NuGet, but I'm using NuGet because it has the dependencies. Yeah? The, the standard, uh, this, this uh, universal package or how it's named, uh, it have no dependencies yet. Maybe there will be in future. It's new thing, but it's much simpler. And it works too with uh, FOB files? Uh, anything, any you any can put there anything. There okay. is a, a default task in the pipeline you can use and just set uh, which files should be uh, included in, in, in the package and push the package to the server. Is it uh, in your private space or? It's, it's, it's your uh, Azure De uh, DevOps account. Okay, it's and secure from outside. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it's local. Of course, in, uh, if you have uh, the NuGet, for example, you can set uh, the upstream servers and if you want, you can put it, put it to the, some public servers later. 
That's all. So, does he get a t-shirt uh, again? I don't know. <laughs> Should he? <laughs> of course. Okay. It's the last one. So, I would like you to uh, to say thank you, and uh, enjoy yours today. Thank you.